Well, all right, hello everybody and welcome back to another trying to fix video. And in this video, I have for you this GoTrax GXL version scooter. Got this one off of Facebook Marketplace. Somebody said that it would work to the point where they would go on it for a while and then it would just stop. And they couldn't figure out what was going on with it, but they would go, it would be riding it for a little bit and it would just stop. Uh, it did not come with a charger, so luckily it came with a full charge battery though, but I only bought this thing for 40 bucks to see if I can get it, uh, get it functional again, so um, we'll try to figure that out. So I can turn it on, I know I'm out of frame right now, I'm trying to keep mainly this thing in frame. There's two buttons on it, one is for gas, gas, throttle, one is for brake as far as I understand, and when I press this throttle button, absolutely nothing happens. Stand up. Absolutely nothing happens. Uh, there's a screen on the top that tells you your speed that you're going. I don't know if you can see that. Um, the only reason I bring that up is because if I, let me get it closer to the camera. If uh, I do spin the, the wheel, it goes up. So it seems to be, the accelerometer seems to know what's going on and know that it's actually uh, speeding up. And as the person said, it was intermittent. Future Jeff here, and I'm going to pause the video just to interject some hindsight information for you guys i'm sure there's a plenty of people who are about to start yelling at their screen for what i'm about to try turn that into engagement put it in a comment do something that at least helps it with the youtube algorithm because i deserve it but put it in the comments please because i'm about to embark in an entire journey of something that i will i will come to later in the video but i start chasing down a fault that if you know anything about these scooters which I didn't at the time, you're going to immediately be like, what are you doing? Why are you going down this path? But like I said, interjecting with letting you know that I know that that happens. It will get better. You'll, you'll see me get there at some point in this video, but just keep watching it and let's enjoy the ride. What I found out is if I spin the wheel, there we go. If I spin the wheel and get it started going, I can then hold the throttle and it will actually work. It gets up to 16 miles an hour, as you can see uh, right there. Wheel, wheel is spinning, and if I stop it, if I let go, it actually is still going. There it goes, it's slowing down. I can keep it, keep hitting it. It'll keep going again, basically until it gets down to a mile an hour, it still works fine. The second it gets back to zero miles an hour though, it just, it won't start again. Won't start again. Um, I have successfully, you know, ridden this thing across the room once I get it started. So the thing does work, it does have power. I just gotta figure out why it won't start up from standing still and only will start up if you give it some throttle. So you look, nothing but, so I can give it a little bit of throttle, it works just fine. I don't have much room in here to do that. So let's get started. All right, well, let's see if we can get into here and uh, make this a little bit easier to work on. So, I'm gonna use a 2.0 Allen wrench size here to access the control board. There we go. So here is the control board for this. And I believe, as far as I understand, before we go any further, I can take this over to the bench because if I use this 4.0 Allen wrench, I can take this piece off as well and then the whole head will lift, separating it from the battery and the lower portion of the, uh, of the scooter. And I can take it to the bench. Let's see how accurate my understanding of that is. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, look at that. So that's pretty cool. It's the whole top portion of, uh, of the scooter with some connections in there that will connect to, ugh, let me see, that will connect down into 
This is the top of the scooter, and I believe this whole thing is like the battery that connects all the way down to the bottom, but the battery's housed in this tube. I don't need to mess with that though, uh, I don't think. At least, as of now I don't. I at least have a way to get this thing to a more convenient location. All right, here we have it. Uh, a little bit more familiar of a, a view. I'm trying manual focus this time, and so it won't be, camera won't be moving in and out of me, and I got it actually zoomed in so you can see this hopefully relatively well. But this is the um, the handle mechanism, and I know it's, it's straight in front of me, but it's kind of to the side for, for you guys because it's that's where the camera's at. Sorry, I, I don't have a better camera set up. But let's take a look at this here. So this is the brake. This one over here is the throttle. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh, here's the front cover. Uh, clearly there is a connection. This is to the charging port. Uh, this one is to the button. So I could in theory probably disconnect the charging port, but I'd have to leave the button connected um, if I want to test anything out. So I don't need to do anything with that right yet. I'll just leave them both connected there. Um, and there's multiple other just connectors in here. This one has one, two, three, four, five wires on it on each side. This one has three on the top, three on the bottom. So three wires, three wires, three wires. I would assume that the brake and the throttle are going to have a similar connector. These ones are the same color. I would bet these are for the brake and the throttle. Um, could be wrong. Could be completely incorrect on that but you know what I'll stick with that guess and my bet is given that they're a red a black and a green wire so it's red on the red black on the outside and green is in the middle I would bet this is some type of potentiometer that has a voltage straight across the red and the black but it, it's variable uh, onto the green I would bet we can probably figure that out with the multimeter. There we go. That's actually perfect. You can actually see. I'll try to even angle it to where you can see it as long as my hand doesn't get in the way. Uh, There's going to be a DC voltage that's running on for sure. So I don't know how many volts though. And I don't know what's going to happen if I turn this thing on when it's not connected. Oh wait. That's the battery, right? <laughs> I've disconnected so I can't turn this thing on, can I? What's going to happen if I try to turn that? <laughs> nothing happens uh, which makes sense because why would something happen if I turned it on when I don't have the battery disconnected um, let me see if I can pull the battery out of there how long the battery actually is uh, if I can keep it on the table okay so I was unsuccessful at being able to pull the battery out of the scooter but that's okay because I ended up finding an old charger for a laptop that has the same connection as what this charger would and granted this is only 19 volts and I think 2.7 amps and I believe I looked up that the chargers needed for this are a 42 volt 5 amp charger but if I do plug this in um, I can hit the power button and you can see it actually is enough to power this thing up. Whether this will charge the battery or not, I am not sure. Maybe it'll just charge it at a slower rate. Uh, that would be nice because then I wouldn't have to buy a charger and we'll just charge. But it's enough to at least power this thing without having to go put it back into the, uh, into the scooter. So what I had done a little bit using this, because I'm not sure this is the right input voltage, so I could be getting readings that are a little strange. But I did off camera look at both of these connectors right here, which one I believe, I believe it's this one that runs to the uh, throttle and this one that runs to the, to the brake. And I was testing that between, there's a black and a red on the outsides and there's a green pin in the middle. And I believe it's supposed to get, uh, or it gets five volts if I recall to the outside pins. So the red and the green get Five volts, hold on. Or the red and the black at five volts, I mean. Right now I'm getting nothing. Hold on. Ugh. I don't know if I'm not making a good connection because this was giving me voltage. There we go getting 4.3 volts uh, coming into this, but it at the same time was much, much 
it's supposed to be on a, on a higher current, so maybe that or a higher voltage, so that's why. But if I go to the middle pin, uh, which is what I believe is the uh, working as the the throttle, the potentiometer, or however, whatever it utilizes, it's probably it's not a resistance, but you know something that changes the the voltage output. It's three point six volts now, and if I I don't know if you can see on camera what I'm doing. I'm moving this with my thumb or my pinky. I'm moving the throttle and it is dropping from 3.6 down to about 0.7 without, without much, there's no hesitation at all. So I'm not seeing that there's any like anything not working appropriately with the signal, at least getting to this connector. And to verify that I can go over to this one that's hooked up to the brake or the, the, not the brake. I don't know what it's called. Um, my leads are backwards. That's why it's negative. But I'm getting 4.68. And if I oops, go to the middle pin now too. And those are the two outer pins. Middle pin. This one might work a little bit differently. So it actually increases voltage when you go down. We actually let's see that here. Let's see if I can get this thing to be right. Uh, so it's, instead of starting at a higher voltage at all times, it starts at a relatively low voltage, 0.76. And as I push the throttle, it increases the voltage. Uh, so it's basically like the exact reverse of what this one is doing. Now, unfortunately, doing that has shown me that I don't see any problems with the throttles themselves. They seem to be passing the right Voltage is, oh, I don't know if they're the right, they're, they're passing a voltage that seems to make sense through to the board. Uh, so I, it would indicate to me that it's probably correct. Maybe taking this thing apart just jostled this in such a way, maybe there was connections not getting made. I did disconnect this and take out the power so I'm not dealing with power anymore. I did disconnect this, you know, look at the pins and connect it back together. And same with this one, even though this one was working fine. Put it back together. I don't know if just jostling this was enough to make this thing work. I'm gonna put it back together as is. See if that has changed anything. Um, if we're getting any different behavior. And if we are, then it could have just been a loose connection. If we are not, I'm gonna bring this back over here. And I, I was originally gonna to try to change around. Ah, you can't. I can't do that. I just realized. So I was gonna change around the throttle and the brake, and see if I could it would produce any different way of working. But I just realized that these are keyed in a different way. So coming from the throttle has the, uh, the, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say because this slot plugs into this slot. So one would think that this is the male end going into here, but these receptacles are the female receptacles for these male pin receptacles. So long story short, this is the, the female end of this throttle. It's kind of, it's coming from the throttle itself and it has to plug into the male end of this connector. Whereas, uh, for the brake versus the throttle, it's the exact opposite. It's the female end coming from the the brake going to the male end here. I could potentially uh, force something together with some clips or paper clips or whatever to just swap them because I want to see if I can experience anything different uh, if everything is still the same. But I don't know what the behavior of the of this would be when it starts out at zero voltage for the throttle and it increases as you press it down. I don't know what the behavior would do. But Let's see what happens now. I'm just plugging it back in. And I, I probably won't show you that because it's probably just going to behave the same way. So I might be right back over here. So sadly, that has not gotten me to figuring anything else out in this. I uh, hooked it back up. Exhibits the same exact symptoms. I tried to run a wire from the connection on the, the brake to the throttle. And I couldn't get anything to like produce anything at all. Uh, except that the brake would actually engage because it was connected. I tried to disconnect the brake and run that same throttle so that the brake control was controlling and nothing would happen uh, ever. But as you can see, it's all, you know, connected right together. If I hit the button, I get nothing still. If I, I have this thing propped up right now and I'm using this chair because it's easier to see. I spin the wheel even just a little bit and hit the throttle. It works. And as long as I don't let it completely stop, this it'll run like this seemingly fine. And then the brake throttle, you know, obviously engages and works. Um, I, pr I pretty much think I checked the board. I tried to check for 
if there was anything that I could figure out that was controlling the throttle display, because I was curious if I tricked the throttle display into thinking it was higher than zero, while it was still stationary and hit the button, I was gonna see if there's any differences, but I can't figure out what wires exactly are controlling the throttle display to, to see what's increasing there, like I could more easily with the thumbstick controls. I think I need to look at more stuff further down the shaft. The battery is here, and I know you're supposed to be able to pull the battery out. Unfortunately, I'll show you. If I take this thing out now, oh gosh. I don't want to keep having to take it apart. The, uh, if, you, if you notice that this is riding up a little bit, the uh, connector end has kind of popped off of where it goes, so there's wires in there, and it's. Uh, I don't want to rip those wires out, but... I think I need to get, so the battery supposedly, at least in the newer, or the V2 of this, I don't know about V1, and that's the problem, connects down to the dry butter shaft down here through some prongs. They're supposed to be able to lift the battery straight out of here. I'm not sure, there's a couple dents in this. I'm not sure if that's like holding the battery in or what. There's a couple screws down here that I've removed that I would think might be helpful. And there's also a screw up here in the front of it though, this screw will not budge. So I don't know if that's not meant to come out or if I, it, it's stuck and I'll never be able to get it out. I don't even know if it's needed to get out, but I need to do something to get down to this wheel assembly because I don't know if there's something that's, if it's sticking and therefore something's not engaged properly unless I manually am spinning the wheel that it actually like is freeing something up to let the throttle work or if the throttle's actually, it's, I don't know what the problem could be. The throttle itself I think is fine because I tested the voltage on it when I was, when it wouldn't move at all versus when I would kick it with my foot and spin it and uh, hit the throttle and it would actually spin the wheel. The throttles, the, the voltage has never changed on the throttle. So I don't think it's an issue with the, the throttle giving out the wrong signal. I think there's something else that's making it not engage for some reason when it's at a standstill. And I've got to dig further to find out what this is. Uh, I'm just going to off camera, see if I can pull some screws out of this thing, see if I can get the wheel off, do anything to get it to more and see just what we can do. Oh, by the way, I also tried to, uh, I plugged this in with, uh, when it was connected again, I didn't see any lights indicating that it was charging. So I sadly don't think this will work as a charger. Granted it's full right now. So I don't know if it only will have a charging light. I don't even know if there's a charging light, but I don't know if it'll show a different symbol or a battery blinking symbol or something when it's charging or what. I have no idea if this will work until I deplete the battery some more. So stay tuned. All right, so a couple days later, and guess what? I've got a lot of the scooter apart. As you can see, the wheel, the wheel's open. Uh, I know a little bit more about this thing and how it works, and I have an interesting confession to make. I uh, was trying to look for some videos or any tutorials or anything on somebody with this scooter and exhibiting the similar problems to see if they were able to fix it. And I found something new. Uh, it turns out that these scooters are push start scooters, uh, which means that they're not meant to go until you give it a little push start which means that everything that I've been chasing down with this thing not starting when this, the wheel was not spinning at all, uh, it wouldn't start from zero. It would only start when I gave it a little bit of a kick. It's because that's how these things are designed. So I've now taken the scooter apart and realized that I probably was chasing down something that isn't the problem. Now, the seller did state that this thing would stop working was the problem, that they would be riding it for a while and it would stop working. I assumed that what I was seeing, because I hadn't done any research to know this particular brand of scooter and how it was supposed to work, that, that what I was experiencing was normal. I have not experienced what this individual who was selling it stated their problem was because I've never actually taken this thing on the road. Who'd have thought that actually researching how these things are supposed to work before you tear into the thing like this was, uh, was going to be a good idea. But before I put it back together... I'll tell you why it was a good thing that I did take this thing apart. But I wanted to show you some things in case you've never seen the inside of one of these before, because I've never seen the inside of one of these. This is a uh, connector that comes from the main board. Uh, uh, this goes all the way up the shaft. I'm sure it's probably some connections down in here, and then it continues on uh, up to here. Now, where this top comes off, I will show you something funny about it as well. 
All right, I stood it back up to get it in a better position. Uh, one thing I told you in a previous clip was the fact that this uh, the top connector of the battery had uh, wiggled loose from its base. I think it broke a clip because it won't stay in there, but that shouldn't cause too much of a problem because the wires are all still connected down there, as you can see, and I can get this thing like lined back up. And when I screw it in, it should hold it in fine. But one thing I did notice that was very interesting about this is because this clip broke open, it exposed the wires to me. And they interestingly, and I'm not quite sure why, but they changed the wire colors when it goes in. So you can see the black one is all the way, it would, it would connect in just like this. The black one is all the way over to this side here. The next one is red and then blue and then green and then yellow. And if you look at the way they connect to the wiring harness, there's actually black and red, those are the same. And then instead of blue, green, yellow from the, the middle, blue, green, yellow, they switched it to the yellow, is in the middle the blue is the next one over and then this other red wire over here is uh is there so i don't know why they did a color switch but just something to note that i wanted to to show off but the reason i was saying that it is a good reason or a good thing that i had taken this thing apart is oops when i did take off the wheel where it comes there was a a piece this piece here goes over both sides of this wheel like this and it's this is a spot for the nut an insert for the nut the this side of it here when i took it off the nut was completely loose and just sitting right in here it wasn't even connected to to the spindle to the the shaft that it's supposed to be on uh the bolt so it's a good thing that i took it apart because then i can actually put it back together and put that nut back on how it's supposed to be <laughs> but i also open this thing up and I figured I'd just show you before I put it all back together because I'm hopefully never going to open this thing back up like this again. This connector here is a connection that goes to this connector that I was talking about earlier and it transfers the uh, the power from the throttle and from the brake and I'm assuming from the accelerometer must have the signal that goes through there as well. I couldn't use my multimeter to actually figure out how it all worked unfortunately but it's a three wire connection that goes to here and that's all this thing is. And then this is like the, the guts of the way that the scooter works. It's got a uh, motor in here. I don't know, they, these are called stators, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, I'm just saying. But it's all, you know, magnetic coils and things like that with a, a drive bearing there. This thing just unscrewed handful of nuts on the, uh, or a handful of screws on the outside and then popped that thing off just to see the inside of this thing. And I figured I'd show you before I put this all back together. Since I didn't need to take it apart to this, I was just trying to, curious to see if there was anything in there I was gonna see that was like binding up on on the, the motor, the stator, or the magnetic coils, or anything that would make it not go. But it turns out, like I said, that is the way this thing is supposed to work. So now I need to get this thing all back together. Ugh, all the different pieces, or some screws right there. There's some screws up here. Here's one of the nuts for the, the side. Gonna get this thing all back together Hopefully it's still working. Hopefully I didn't break anything and then actually take it outside and see if it works at least to start. And then I need to ride it around for a while and see if I can replicate what the original owner said the problem was with this. Okay, it's all back together and it seems to be doing what it was doing before. So knowing that nothing seems to be broken, let's, uh, Let's take this thing outside and see what it does in the alley behind the house and uh, see if we can get the actual complaint to show up or if may maybe just messing with this thing for a while, fix whatever that problem was. Maybe it's just going to be something that one day when I'm riding, it's going to say, hey, now that you're uh, a long ways into your trip, we're going to stop working. I don't know, but let's go find out. All right, so now let's see the thing I probably should have done in the first place test this thing out to see what it actually does. Definitely some there's hesitation in the wheel. It worked for a second. Hmm. 
It won't work anymore. Something's not right. The wheel like stutters as it's uh, as it's going. So I don't know what's going on with this. Can't get it to start up again. The brake actually doesn't even seem to engage anymore. And that was, oh no, that's working. Brake's working. I can't get it to do what it was doing upstairs anymore. Well, back to the shop. All right, so back inside, as you can see, this thing is somewhat apart again. Uh, I don't know if you could hear me when I was out there, but what I said was the very first push off I did, I was able to push off, hit the throttle, and it actually started going. And I was like, oh, this is great. And then it got really clunky. Like the wheel felt like it wasn't engaged properly. And I stopped. The brake actually worked. I turned around. I pushed off again. It did work again. And then it stopped as it was just as it was going. It, it stopped after like a couple feet. And I've never gotten the throttle to engage the uh, the wheel again. So even when it did run, it was it felt like something was wrong. So what I'm doing right now is I brought it back in and I took the top off there. And I just checked to make sure there was no loose wires that the throttle hadn't come disconnected or anything. And it didn't. So then I said, okay, you know what? This is probably going to be a failed test. But whatever. Let's take the front wheel off again. Go look at the motor. Uh, the stator or whatever it is that's in here. I don't know enough about these to really diagnose and troubleshoot it. So what I did was I just looked at it and as you can see, like that's got all the windings and things like that in there. Let's see if it'll focus in there. It's got all the windings in there and it's got a ring of magnets around it. The one thing I did notice, I don't know if this is an issue or not. There's a spot, where was it? There's a spot where a row of about five or six magnets is right up here. I don't know how well you can actually see that. Five or six of the magnets in a row are down about, you know, one or two centimeters lower than the other magnets. I don't know if that's normal, if that's a problem, or what that is. I tried to see if they would move, if anyone would move, if I could push these down. Uh, they, they don't move, so I can't do anything with them. I did realize that you can spin the entire assembly. Ugh, hold on, let me get my pliers. So if I took the uh, pair of pliers and put them on the, the nut, you can actually spin this assembly, as you can see. And at first when I was spinning it, it was extremely clunky. Like, it just did, it did not feel like it was spinning right. And it felt like it was kind of grinding on the back side of the, of the wheel. So I looked at it, and I was like, okay, I, I, I can't get this thing out of here. I tried to pull it out. Uh, I could, couldn't get the motor out. So I ended up taking a piece of wood... I put I balanced this on the the two bricks. Took a piece of wood, put it on here, and I hammered it down. And actually got it to move slightly down. Um, it actually moved really far down at first. Uh, it wouldn't actually come completely out, which is what I was trying to do, uh, just to see if I could look at it and see if there's anything blocking it. It didn't come out all the way, but it came out to the point where these were way above this lip. And I was like, okay, that's going to be a problem. And I can't get a pressure point here to put a piece of wood and then hammer that down because there's a wire coming out of there that connects to everything else. I ended up getting pliers around this in such a way and hitting it from the top. And I got it to rest back down farther. So it's not as far down as it was before. And if I spin it now, it actually spins relatively freely. It's not perfect, but it's not nearly as like clunky gripping around as it was. So now I wanted to show you guys all the things that I've done. I'm going to put this thing back together and see if we've made any progress on this. Because if this doesn't fix anything or do anything, I wouldn't know where else to, to take this. Because my assumption is there's something wrong with this motor. That's my assumption. It could be wrong. It could be something else. And maybe somebody can tell me in the comments of this video if we get to the point where this does not fix it or doesn't make it even better run at all, then I might revisit this if somebody can give me guidance on where to go. But right now, these 
the items. I looked them up to see if I could just replace this whole assembly and of course this is the most expensive piece. It's like 150 bucks just for this front wheel with the motor because this is really the, the main guts of the whole thing. This is what drives a scooter. So of course it's going to be expensive and this scooter is about 350 bucks I think new. Uh, it's the, the version 2. I don't know how much the version 1 is. I couldn't actually find one of those online and I think this is a, v, a V1 but it was it's not worth it to me so it's just going to be trying to see this and i if i have to post this as a failure i have to post it as a failure but i was going to show you all the things i tried before calling it quits so let me get this thing back together yet again and let's see what we have so just a quick update before i put the the wheel back on i will say that i've put the plate back on and screwed it back in took a little finagling to get this on because it you know everything inside is in a different position but if I put my pliers on this thing now, it spins beautifully. Uh, there is like no resistance in this. And I mean, look at that. That was, it was not acting like this before, whether that's because it's better or because it's completely broken now is anyone's guess. So let's get this back on and find out. All right, here we are again, positioned where you guys can see the scooter, but not really my face. Let's uh, turn this thing on, Let's see what happens. I can't, I can't even get it to spin right now. <laughs> now it is sticking very hard. It rolls just fine. Oh, it started to go. The brake seems to work still. <laughs> it's not that, not that good of a brake, but yeah, the, the brake's obviously still sending a signal down because the wheel instantly stops when it's like this, hopefully. That's in frame. I... Yeah, it's it's in frame, barely, but ugh. I can see it like that. Not that it spins very long without giving it a or on its own, but the brake is definitely the brake is definitely adding drag that is not there otherwise. So the connections are still being made. So, unfortunately for me in this video, this scooter is not going to get fixed. I would love to see comments and suggestions on other things to try if I haven't already damaged the stator beyond repair. I don't know the things that I've done to it. I don't know if that causes permanent damage, if you're allowed to manipulate them like that. I could have just made this thing so it'll never work again. It is interesting that we started this video, I was able to get the wheel spinning pretty regularly and then when I finally took it outside, after it was still doing that in here, after the initial teardown, it only ran once and it stopped. And that's when I started exhibiting the behavior that the, uh, the original seller talked about. So I think I got to the point where I understand the original fault. I tried to do some more troubleshooting on it and I just have nowhere else to go. So unfortunately, like some of these videos, this is a fail. But let me know if you got anything else I might try. We could try to revisit or what I did wrong, or if you know for a fact that this is gonna be beyond repair because of what I've done or because of things you know about these scooters, uh, I just, I would love to know. So, unfortunate that it's not a fix, but hey, what can you do? It's all in the sake of learning and understanding how things work. Maybe I'll look into more of those, those staters a little bit more to understand how they work. Now I've at least had an up-close visual inspection of it, so it's learning for me, even if I didn't learn what's wrong with this particular one, I've learned about them, how they're put together, how they, how they operate, and uh, I feel a little bit more comfortable just having more knowledge. So hopefully I've taught you guys something and you had enjoyment of watching me fail. All right, thanks, and see you next time.